Are you wondering what you need to do with your outside hutches to make sure your quail stay comfortable through the cold winter months? Well, that's coming up next in today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Redneck video. Again, my name is Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. Today we're going to be talking about what preparations do you need to make to your outdoor quail hutches to keep them uh, really comfortable all winter long. Now let me start this off by saying I'm in southwest Missouri. Um, it's not the harshest winter around. You may have a little bit of a harsher winter. Our average lows in the wintertime get down to probably somewhere around the low teens, down to about zero. We'll have prolonged periods of times for several weeks on end where it doesn't get above freezing for the day and it stays down below 20 degrees. Now you may have a much harsher winter than what I do, but in my experience, Quail are pretty cold hardy. Feathers make great insulators. I keep my birds outside all winter long and I've never had a problem with any of them dying from the cold um, or, or any of those kinds of issues. Here's the preparations that you do need to make though. There are a few things. One is you need to make sure that you have your outdoor housing set up in a way where they have a wind block. They have a way to get out of the wind. For the most part these birds are pretty comfortable hanging out here in the open, the wire. Uh, they do it even on the coldest of nights it seems like. But sometimes when the wind really picks up it, they like to get over into this other area area that is blocked off from the wind. And let me open this up and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. And I don't know how well you can see it, but this is, and there's a couple of them hanging out in there right now. This is just covered with wood on all sides. Now it's still got a wire bottom, but what I've done is I've thrown a tray in here, a dropping tray, and I've even used nursery trays, those 1020 trays that you would uh, start seeds in. I've even used those before. Um, but this works pretty well. This just gives them a little bit of a wind block from the bottom. Um, it's got the, and this works as a sandbox too. I usually fill it with sand. Um, and then I've got a board right here, and I don't know how well you can see that on camera. Let me open up this side here. There we go. So you can see there's the board right here. It's got a doorway over there where they can access either side of that. Most of the time the birds honestly hang out in this wide open area, but it is nice for them to have an area where they can get out of the wind. I've taken just an old feed sack and I staple it across the top so we don't get down drafts on the top and it blocks all the wind from the top. And that cage setup works pretty well. It keeps them pretty happy. Um, like I said, most of the time, even on the coldest nights when it's well below zero degrees Fahrenheit, the birds pretty much just hang out right out here in the open. The cold doesn't seem to bother them all that much. You might see them kind of fluffed up a little bit, but again, feathers are pretty good insulators. They seem to pretty uh, do a pretty good job of regulating their own temperature and really don't seem to be too bothered by the cold. The hardest part about wintertime really though is watering. Um, right now I've still got my automatic watering system um, set up and you might be able to see on camera they're actually using the water cups right now because today it's like 45, almost 50 degrees out, so it's not freezing, um, the water's still working, and we're in that period of time where our average daytime highs are usually up close to about 50. It might drop below freezing at night, but during the day it usually gets up to about 50 degrees and everything kind of thaws out. It just, it doesn't freeze solid overnight. Now here in a couple of months we're going to get to where well, probably by the end of the month, we'll get to where we have prolonged periods where it never gets above freezing during the day. And during that time frame, I'll take down the automatic watering system and I switch over to waters that are basically the same thing I use for a feeder. And uh, this works pretty well because it's got a lid on it, first of all. If you don't have, if you just have a bowl, a crock, um, with water in it, the birds get in there, uh, they, they walk on the, on the ice, they, uh, you know, they, they leave droppings in it, they, they, they make a huge mess. So I like to have a, a, a water that has a lid on it that keeps them out of the water, keeps it a little bit cleaner. And again, this is just a Tupperware container, well, a Glad container, but it's Tupperware style container, and I've just cut some holes in the top of it. And I just bring a milk jug out with water in it and fill it up. And you don't need to fill it all the way up, just, you know, right about there. Um, now, what I will say is that during the uh, times when it doesn't get above freezing during the day, um, you'll probably need to do this twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. In the morning, when you put water in there, they're going to go to that and drink as much as they can, uh, but then it's going to freeze up and they're going to need another drink later in the evening. So you'll want to go back out in the evening and you'll want to add some more water to that. Now, usually what happens is they'll drink it down to about right there 
and then it freezes over and it's ice. I don't bother knocking the ice out of it. I just put water on top of that. They'll go to it. They'll get their drink as you know, drink as much as they can out of it. And then the next morning, I'll knock the ice out of it, or I'll, I'll have two feeders. Is usually what I do because these things will get pretty brittle. And um, I'll take a new one out there. I'll take the old one in, and I'll just run it under some hot water to get the ice out of it. Because otherwise, you try knocking the ice out of these. A lot of times, they just break. But that's really the only change that I make in the winter time is having to water them a little bit differently. Now let's talk about waterers for just a minute. I'm constantly getting questions about how to keep your watering system from freezing up. There really is no good way. Um, if you had a circulating system, everything was you know, pressurized and the water was constantly moving through it, it probably wouldn't freeze up. Your bucket would stay um, uh, you know, thawed. Your lines might even stay thawed. But the problem you're going to have is the water cups themselves, they have a little valve inside there and that valve is going to freeze up. Even if you put a heat source in the bucket itself, when it drops down below about 15 degrees Fahrenheit, it's not going to matter. The water valves themselves are going to freeze up. Those things freeze almost instantaneously. So there's no real good way to keep this all thawed out. Now, if you have these in an insulated barn or something like that, that's a different story altogether. But with just completely outdoor hutches, when it gets down to where extended periods where it never gets above freezing, the watering system comes down and I just switch over to these. Now, these times right now, um, we will have days uh, where it may not get much above freezing and in those days it takes a while for the whole thing once that's frozen it takes a while for it to thaw out so that's why I've got these waterers out here because on those days I will bring this out uh, with water in it and I'll stick it in the cage in the morning and then usually by evening the whole system's thawed out they can get their drink out of the system that way and uh not, not too much of an issue. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if you have a different experience or if you found a way that you can keep the watering system working in really, really cold temperatures. Hopefully you guys learned something from this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, God bless.